My name's Dr. Leslie Dibley. I am lead for the Centre of uh, Chronic Illness and Ageing. Our purpose is to deliver collaborative research with colleagues from um, within the school, across the university and external uh, national and international partners. We're beginning with a, an open discussion with um, research and practice and teaching colleagues who are assigned to the centre to identify the core themes that we want to work with and build our strategic approach to um, research around. And embedded in that also will be um, PhD scholarships so that we bring people um, on and, and develop the next generation of, of researchers as well. So our aim is to address those two core aspects of the centre, the chronic illness and the ageing, both in their own right, but also about what happens when those things come together. Because inevitably, um, the fact that an illness is chronic means that people will age with it. Um, and so what happens when that condition meets the the, the normal deficits that come with ageing anyway and how does that make a difference to uh, you know, people's lives and how they, how they manage their illness in, uh, in their older years. And it's highly likely, um, in fact I would expect, that there's overlap across other centres as well. Where there's inequalities it, that usually has a detrimental effect on health and education and obviously a lot of the work that we do, that we aim to do around uh, understanding the nature and experience, everyday nature and experience of disease is relevant for uh, healthcare colleagues and healthcare professionals. So there's some workforce development um, issues there that we're likely to overlap with as well. So for example, um, uh, an audit at uh, Newham Hospital in collaboration with the staff at Bart's Health um, NHS Trust that's addressing the challenges that language barriers present to the delivery of safe and compassionate care. So we've got a big multi-ethnic population and a lot of people whose preferred langu first language is not English. Another project in development is with the Young Epilepsy Charity and that's addressing the qualitative impact on the family when a child has severe epilepsy that's difficult to control. Each of the projects that I have, uh, that I've just described, has potential to inform clinical practice and or change policy in the real world, so um, in the same order. The audit will evidence the size of the problem. It will highlight how m many patients um, whose preferred first language is not English, how they would prefer to access their access to translation advocacy service, the health economics costs of um, failed preparation for procedures and when those things have to be, have to be um, rebooked. And when you know that and you know the size of the problem, then you can look at, right, how do we change the delivery of this service to improve the experience for the patient so that they get information in a way that they need and can understand, that they are then able to make a truly informed decision about what's happening, uh, happening to them and that NHS services and resources are, are used to their maximum efficiency as well. So that's benefiting patients, it's benefiting the NHS services, it's also benefiting NHS staff because they then a, the ha will have the, um, the tools in place to be able to support people properly where instead of sort of trying to manage as they you know on a day-to-day -day basis as they go along and the young epilepsy project will um, provide much needed information there's nothing currently about um, you know the impact that it has on family um, when when a child has has a severe um, has severe epilepsy so evidencing the support that these people are, uh, families are likely to need means that you can then provide that support. If you don't know what's needed, you can't, you can't give it. Um, and if you get evidence of what's needed from the people themselves who experience it, then it's more likely that the support you provide is going to meet their, meet their needs. So that will not only uh, inform the charity's work going forward, but also um, you know, provide much needed um, information to other families who are going through the same thing. So again, insights into the reality for the individual has the potential to inform benefits policies, employer obligations, and again, feed into disability literature. The future holds promise of a wealth of education and uh, health research which can benefit uh, local, national, international, and global communities. We work with a number of um, national and international partners. We work, we work with uh, NHS trusts um, locally and across the country, universities locally across the country, um, examples, um, Bart's Health NHS Trust, um, we have several projects with uh, St Mark's in Harrow, universities, King's College London locally, uh, University of Sheffield, 
and uh, internationally I've recently been over at um, University of Buff at Buffalo in New York State. The thing that makes that work is, uh, is good communication, it's uh, openness and a willingness to share uh, ideas, to hear other people's points of views, to get in the best people around the table who are um, who have the right skills for the project that you're trying to deliver and what you want to achieve um, and you know working together to overcome the inevitable problems that come up in, in, in research as well. 